on that note, we move now to item two of the agenda tonight, which is approval of the agenda. Okay. I am now seeking a Second. motion. Approval of the agenda. I have a motion from Representative Rose and a second from Representative Allen. All right, is there any discussion about approval of the agenda this evening? No discussion? All right then, so we move to a vote. All those in favor of approving tonight's agenda, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. Extensions, and motion passes. <coughs> All right, with that, we move to approval of minutes. 9413 orientation meeting and the regular meeting. Motion. motion. All right, I saw a motion. I'm going to be explaining real quick, guys. We have we actually have meeting minutes this week. If you look at the agendas that we have, they contain all of the minutes that Mr. Hoviak here wrote up for the orientation meeting and for the actual meeting that you can look at when these materials go out prior to the meeting. So with no further questions, again, I'm at, I saw a motion from Representative Kamiziak for approval of the minutes. Can I need a second for that? Second. All right, a second from President Costa. So with that, is there any discussion of approval of the amendments? With no discussion, we want to vote. All those in favor of approving the amendments of the 914, uh, 9-4-13 orientation meeting and the regular meeting, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. Abstentions, and motion passes. Okay, and with that, we move on to speakers. As you guys know full well, we have a fall speaker series this semester. And last week we had uh, Kate McDiff from the Alumni Affairs Office come in. And this week we have Linda Kent Davis from the Director of Career and Development Center come in. And she will be talking about LinkedIn uh, for a few minutes, about do's and don'ts. And just pretty much, because LinkedIn, as you don't know, as she'll explain too, is pretty much a professional resume. And she's just going to help give some helpful tips. So it's fine. <laughs> I can I can talk with you. That's fine. Thank you for pulling that up for me. No problem. Whenever you're ready to speak. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for letting me join you tonight. I'm Linda from the Career Center. I'm just curious, how many of you have set foot in the Career Center ever? Okay, so not so bad. How many of you have LinkedIn pages? How many of you actively use your LinkedIn pages? How many of you have ever had anybody give you feedback on your LinkedIn page other than your mother and your best friend on this. Okay, great. I have a very short amount of time and LinkedIn is a much larger topic than anything that we could cover tonight. So there are a few points that I want to make about it as you're thinking about using it. And certainly the invitation is please come to the Career Development Center because we are among those people who can look at your LinkedIn page, give you feedback on it, if it's appropriate or not, and also talk to you about many of the different things that are embedded within LinkedIn um, why you would want to use it and how you can use it. There are a lot of articles out right now saying that traditional age college students don't use LinkedIn, that only old people use LinkedIn <laughs> on this. So here's my pitch for why you should join us old people on LinkedIn. And that's because the people in your who will probably at this point in time be able to impact your career, who are the decision makers, are people who are using it. They're the people who have the expertise in the field, and they're the people with who you want to connect. And this is the way that we do that professionally. In the same way that you do other ways of connecting in and social media in your own ways than that. So I would suggest that you use that. And when I was asked to come tonight, I was asked to talk about do's and don'ts. And I have all sorts of handouts to leave with you mm -hmm. on this. And I decided to divide it into two pages. Notice that 10 minutes, I can do turbo talk in terms of do's and don'ts for your profile, for the piece that you're going to pull up. And hopefully we'll have a moment to look at some of those pieces there. And then do's and don'ts around how do you want to access that. So, do's and don'ts around your profile. Can you actually click on the part where we go to my profile? And your top. Because we're going to go to mine. So go to edit profile. Okay. One of the, so the do's and don'ts are sort of the same thing. Do it, don't do it, the bad kinds of things is thinking about what your profile picture needs to look like on there. I have seen a range of pictures. I've seen pictures of people with groups of their friends. I have seen pic pictures my own stepdaughter had her wedding picture on there with a very low cut down, which was not professional. Um, I've seen people in bars and they kind of cut the bar off. You can still see the bottle of gin on the bar behind them. What you're looking at is you're looking at a professional profile picture, just a headshot, nobody else in the picture with you, ideally smiling. And that's if you choose to put a picture on. Some people don't do that. 
Um, if you decide to have a LinkedIn page before you make it go live, you want to have it complete. Can you, when you get back there, you can just scroll down. So there are many different categories on there, and it's not dissimilar from a resume. And so that if you could scroll down just so that the summary part's up at the top, that would be great. You want, when you're having a resume, the, the um, common denominator is, is that employers will give you 10 <coughs> seconds or less looking at it. So also when you're going online, you want to make sure that it's not just rich with information, but that you've got a layout that people can skim, scan down the left-hand margin in 10 seconds or less and find out some information on there. So you want to be listing your jobs. You certainly want to be listing your student involvement piece. I told Hillary I was going to critique her piece on there. So Hillary, if you click onto my contacts and pull you up, if you scroll down, is it right here? If you, if you can scroll down the page some more. Actually, you no, know, let's stop there for a minute. Let's go back up about recommendations for a minute. You get to list, keep going where there's all those millions of different little pictures. Move it back up. I think endorsement. Oh, okay. yeah, endorsement. Thank you. I never remember what the terms are <laughs> on this impressed with me, aren't you? Um, you get to go in and you list the skills, and then you have other people who come in and they say that you're good at these things. I have people I have never known in my life who have endorsed me. Like, I don't understand what's going on there. So don't get crazed about this section on your uh, LinkedIn page. People in the professions don't tend to take it terribly seriously. Um, but now let's go to contacts for a minute. Or you just want to look at me? I want to look at you. If we could, please. Because there are some things I really like about Hillary's page. I know she's upgraded her picture, and I know eventually she's going to get a picture taken without people in the background on this. Um, she's got a lot of rich information on this. If you can scroll down to your student government president role. I'm going to talk about that for, okay, right there. She has lots of information in here, but when I read it, in addition to the fact that there were grammatical mistakes, by the way, Hillary, um, <laughs> there's an apostrophe S missing in there. But it's dense. I'm not sure that anyone's going to read it. Now, Hillary's just started in this role. So this is really a description that anybody who has this role as president of student community government, it would all sound the same. I'm hoping that eventually when Hillary has had <coughs> some experience under her belt as in this role, she's going to change it so it's about her experience specifically and the kinds of things that she's been able to achieve, she's been able to facilitate, she's been able to catalyze as a result of that versus those kinds of changes. But I think that overall it's quite good um, on this, and she has had it looked at by the Career Center. Um, so some of the do's and don'ts, you want them on your profile, you want to make sure that if you, you have it out there, you want to keep it live, keep it updated as things change, add your skills. Ask people to recommend you on there. These aren't your friends saying you're a nice person. These are people that are talking about your work roles, your internship roles, your leadership roles, who can make statements about you. And the protocol is, is if you're asking somebody to do that for you, and you get to ask, that's an okay thing to do, is simultaneously you should be offering to do that for them as well. And you don't have to put it up if you don't like what they write on this. Other <laughs> things, so that's kind of a little bit about your profile. I want to invite you into the office to have the staff look at that for you. And one of the ways that you can do that, quite frankly, is you can invite me <coughs> to connect with you. And I will give you about five minutes worth of feedback, and then I'll invite you some things that I think you should change, and then I'll invite you to come in and have you do that. But using your account, there are some things that you want to do. You want to invite people to become part of your network, and you want to think about whether you want to become part of other people's network. And when you're stepping into that, you want to have a philosophy. There are people whose philosophy is, I will accept anybody who invites me in. Or there are other, or I will, or at, I will accept anybody who asks me to connect. And then there are other people that have, keep very small networks, and they will only connect with people that they actually really know um, well. Part of the piece behind LinkedIn, if you're using it well, is that I want to connect with you, but we've never met before. So I could send you, that may not be true, but I could send you an invitation asking you to connect with me. But if we've never met before, you may not want to connect with me. But I can check by looking at my LinkedIn account and see that Robert, who's in my, is one of my connections, that's not true, but who's one of my connections, is connected to you. So you're considered a second connection to me. 
I have somebody that I can connect with. I can ask him to facilitate an introduction because you have a relationship with him. You may be more likely to be willing to connect with me because I have questions with you about your career field because it's a field that I'm interested in pursuing as well. So this is a very active piece. It doesn't just sit out there. It's not like a resume, it's not flat. It is a networking tool. So all the rules that you know about connecting with people, about being polite, about being appropriate, play out here in the same way they would if you did it face to face, but you're just simply doing this online. Um, I will connect with anybody who has Rick as an alumni, as a current student. And then I also, my philosophy is I will, um, will connect with anybody who's also in the field of career services in some capacity or higher education and then people I happen to know. That's how I do it. Other people will connect with everyone in the universe. But if I didn't know you and you were in my, and I had connected with you because there's Rick in there and you asked me to introduce you to Dean Kane on this, but we hadn't met, I would want to have a conversation with you first before I opened up my connections to you. So what you need to know is, is that everybody out there does this a little differently. So if people turn you down, they're not dissing you. Um, it may just be that they're operating under their own protocol out there. And I think also, too, what illustrates that with LinkedIn is the fact that there's degrees of connections, whereas it's yes. first, second, third. It illustrates yes. what it's like in real life. Yes. So first, Hillary's the first connection because we're in each other's network. But I can see other people will come up and they'll say second, and LinkedIn shows me who's, who's in my network that's connected directly to those people, or all of those things that go out. The other thing that I think, there's a lot, but another thing that I think that you want to pay attention to is that you can join different LinkedIn groups. So I belong to a series of groups related to higher education, related to career development, and I get emails with discussion groups about that or discussion topics that people are carrying on. So I can be keeping up very easily. It comes right to my email inbox related to whatever email address I use here. And this is professional, so you don't want to, you have to care for what email address you're using as well. That I can be part of different discussions. I can, so if you're new to a field and you're trying to learn about it, this is a great way to explore but don't jump into the conversation until you know what you're talking about. You want to kind of lurk in the room, see what kind of comments people are making. What's the culture of the group? You know, you don't want to throw a question out that sounds like, I'm looking for a job in, blah, 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 who can help me? And a thousand people in the group get that. You may want to put out a question that sounds like, I'm interested in exploring careers in and would like some advice around something very specific and would appreciate any thoughts people might share on this. Or you might choose to look at people who are making comments and direct your comment to one of them specifically. But LinkedIn is a very active tool. It's a great tool. It's a great way to know about jobs. It's a great way to um, build your professional network. It's a great way to have access to people that you might not have otherwise. And here's my final commercial before I stop talking because I'm sure I've crossed my 10 minutes by now. The Alumni Association has a LinkedIn group specifically for alumni and they have agreed that we can start letting students join that group. But you have to be vetted to get in. And vetted to get in means that you have met with somebody in the Career Development Center, we've given you some feedback on your page, and we've reviewed sort of the protocol of how do you effectively use this tool. So this is a great piece that I want you to know about. Another thing is if you don't have a professional photograph during homecoming week on that Thursday the 3rd between 10 and 1 a.m., we've hired a professional photographer to be in the Career Development Center to take LinkedIn photographs for you. You know, so don't come in in your t-shirts and your hoodies, come in in your professional attire, and we'll, within a couple of days, we'll get those pictures back to you. So we're really excited about that. Also, we have, and you can check our office because the schedule changes, um, Atrion Networking Corporation has given us their head of human resources for one day a week. So we have 20% of her time, and she's gonna be helping the staff at the Career Development Center. And she loves doing workshops on LinkedIn, she likes reviewing pages on LinkedIn, so she would be a great person for you to come in um, to the office. And I've got handouts that have her name on it so that you can know all of that, as well as some programs that are coming out. So those I have for you also. LinkedIn's own checklist in terms of how to put together a good profile, as well as a list of some of our upcoming programs. So I've hit my time limit and then beyond. So I'm going to stop talking now and leave this with you and say thank you for letting me join you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the question I have is, um, I'm guessing the question is it's not all, but 
say, I mean, we've been in college for a little while, so most of us have had job experience and somewhat that has given us somewhat some type of teamwork experience, stuff like that, for the real world. Should we include all those job experiences, or would that be something that? The answer is yes, because the reason you want to do that is, is that I can go back to any job that I've ever had if I have it listed on there, and I can search with the advanced tools and find out that there are other people who worked at that organization at the same time I did, or who attended the same school I did at the same time. It helps you, it helps you be able to connect with people and search more effectively, <coughs> so you put those on. You may not put descriptions on. There, I don't have full descriptions on mine. But yes, you want to put those on because by building those in, it lets you link. Because when I, oh, this is one thing I forgot to say. LinkedIn, if you want to connect with someone, you click on it, it comes up and says, I'd like to add you to my network, and it signs your name. That's the unbelievably lazy way to do it. So by the way, if any of you are asking to connect with me, I will not connect with you if that's what you do. Write me a note saying, I met you at the student community government meeting, or I'm interested in whatever. You're making, it's every opportunity you want to maximize your ability to make those connections. But it will say, how do you know this person? So if you say colleague, then it will show you list the name of the company. So it already helps build in that relationship. So when the person reads it, even if they don't remember your name, they know that somehow you're connected. Does that more than answer your question? That's perfect. Leave Representative Allen. Yeah, um, have we done in the past like a workshop for students? Like, I know during free period, there's a lot of things going on. Is it possible to set up a kind of a LinkedIn, an hour-ish presentation on it for students just to come in? We would be mass? delighted to do that, absolutely. Attractive would like to do that. Um, we can do that on the staff as well. The downside of that is when we find we just hold standalone workshops that aren't part of the class or part of the student organization, but we find that people tend to come more when it's one-on-one. -on -one. But if you think that there's student need, we certainly can put it out there. And we would be glad to do that. Um, I would like a track to be the one to do it, actually, where she's using it all the time you know, to hunt for candidates. Thank you. So I'm glad you think it might be. I'm assuming what you're asking, you think it might be valuable. I do. So thank you. Anyone else? All right, I just want to thank Ms. Lennon and David for coming in. Thank you. So we move on from speakers and we move on to open forum. Is there anyone here for open forum this evening? Is there anyone here for open forum? Is there anyone here for open forum? If there's no one here for open forum, then open forum is now closed. And we move on to officers' announcements. President Philip Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, just to follow up with uh, Linda Kent Davis's presentation, some of you might be wondering, all right, bring in these speakers, what does this have to do with student government and our mission? Well, to be quite frank, LinkedIn and making yourself a good professional candidate becomes contagious because, John, you're gonna make a LinkedIn profile, or if you already have one, you're gonna say, you're gonna go to your friend and you're gonna say, let's connect on LinkedIn and expand our network. Oh, I don't have a LinkedIn. And then you'll eventually show that person how to make a LinkedIn. And it's something that helps enhance the college community when we all get on board have a LinkedIn to help ourselves for that ultimate goal. As we know, last year a giant theme was um, being able to separate and time manage between student activities and your academics. So I think that in, in following behind that theme that was of most of last session, we bring in Linda Ken Davis, and I, I hope that she was effective for most of you. On a completely different note with my announcements, um, one project I've started, if anyone would like to help in the logistics of, of this, um, I spoke, I've been speaking with, thank you. Um, I've been speaking with um, Kristen Salemi in the student union. Um, we kind of had an idea where um, what we do is put outdoor activity equipment in the Welcome and Info Center and a student would be able to, as they do with the basketball in the rec center, give their ID and they'd be able to use the equipment on the quad. So frisbees, uh, wiffle ball bat, bases, badminton net, brackets, um, um, can jam, um, ladder golf. So things like that, we're looking at the logistics of that right now, trying to work out all the kinks. If any of you are interested or have any feedback on that project, <coughs> please come and see myself, and we'll try to work that into the discussion. Um, I've already started having department chair meetings. Um, my chief of staff, uh, Ms. Allen, 
has been helping to set those up, and they've been really valuable so far. One common theme that I've noticed among the chair department, department chair meetings is um, that transfer credits has been a theme that's come up, and the fact that it's very confusing for students and discouraging and frustrating. So I, I'm having Rebecca head up for some research on the transfer credit process here around college, especially between the big three state universities of CCRI, URI, and here at Ray. Um, I'm gonna be passing around a flyer for Green Up Clean Up. I'm, I'm going to be going to, um, hopefully be going to help out on Green Up Clean Up Day where um, we go around the campus uh, on a nice fall morning and help beautify our campus. Um, this year I'm hoping we get a lot more student involvement uh, if you'd like to be part of my team, please sign your name and your email on the back. It's, it's a very small commitment. It's 8.30 in the morning to 11 a.m. Come, wear long sleeves, long pants. Um, not that pants are anything but long. Um, but um, dress appropriately. It's all detailed here. Um, and it's just a, a good day to take pride in the campus and clean up. Um, and we're also going to be uh, raffling off five VIP passes for group Boston, so hopefully that we can get some exposure for that. So I'm gonna pass this around. If you guys can write on the back of the flyer your name and your email if you're interested in helping. It is on Saturday, September 21st, as I said, 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'll pass this around. And speaking of Roof Boston, tickets are on sale. Um, I've been checking in on ticket sales with um, the coordinator, Group Jordan Day, periodically. Um, they came to campus today, actually, to do some promotions. They'll be back next Wednesday, again, the Wednesday after that on Student Activities Day. So we're seeing a really huge push in ticket sales. They're rising every single week in big increments. And so uh, if anyone has any questions regarding ticket sales, or if a friend has a question or they need help buying tickets, tell them to come visit us in the office. Um, and finally on my announcements, as I said last week, I wanted you to get some more information on all of you as parliament members and set up meetings with you. I had my chief of staff, Rebecca Allen, do a little form, fill out as much or as little of it as you'd like. Um, but I'd like to meet with all of you to see what your passion is, why, what drew you here to student government, and what's a project you want to head up to help improve the campus in your own way. So I'm going to pass around um, this pile, take one and pass it down and fill it out as you can and try to submit it to me before you leave here tonight or by tomorrow. And that concludes my announcements. Thank you, President Costa. And with that, we move to Vice President Ryan Madmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First thing I want to talk about is Student Activities Day, which is coming up. It is September 25th in the quad from 12.30 to, to, to 2. Um, now, later on, we we'll talk about recruitment strategies. But I think that in the first semester, this is the best recruitment strategy uh, that's out there for us. Um, Every, every club on campus is going to be there. We'll also be there. We'll have a big post board. We'll have myself and Hillary and uh, most of the e-board there to help them out. Um, but I'm going to pass around a sign-up sheet, and I'd like for most, if not all, of us to be there. Um, I have time, 15-minute uh, time slots, starting from 2 thir uh, 12.30 to 2. And if we could get one or two people um, at each of these time slots, that'd be great, uh, just so we can have as many faces as possible reaching out to students, talking to students about what we do and uh, things that we're trying to do on campus. And uh, hopefully we can get some new faces for Palm in that way. So I'm gonna pass this around and if you guys could sign up for that, that would be great. Uh, second, um, last year we threw around the idea of having a uh, fishbowl mock parliament meeting and I'd still like to have that uh, this semester. Um, we're looking at dates and the Wednesday, after Student Activities Day during free period. Looks like it might be the best uh, time slot for that, but I'm gonna get back to you guys next week and have an official uh, day slash time that we're gonna be doing that. Um, and to explain the mock meeting, um, basically what it's gonna be is we're gonna go out in the quad and set up uh, tables much like it's set up here, and we're all gonna sit down and have a mock meeting basically. And we'll have, uh, my, my PR committee is gonna help and stand and have flyers and whatnot to uh, explain Parliament and, and what we're doing and why we're on the quad doing this. And hopefully we can get, get some, uh, generate some interest for Parliament and our committees that way. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is on campus today, I've been hearing a lot of confusion and frustration with the iPhone um, and, and getting our RIC email accounts to, to, to link and hook up with our iPhones. 
Um, I have an iPhone myself, and since I've been a student here, I haven't been able to get it set up. Um, and I know we have those nice little help sheets that is supposed to help us get our uh, email set up. I know it works great for Androids, but iPhones, I think, still have a little bit of an issue. So I want to look into that and see if there's any ways uh, that we can uh, better that service, uh, whether it be I talk to the, the help desk and see if there's a, a, really, a quick solution to do it, because it just doesn't seem like there's a, there's a solution out there that's working uh, properly. So that's it for my mind. All right, thank you. Uh, if I try to back up, before we move on, we have some comments or questions. Uh, Representative Allen. Yeah, my question is the mock meeting. So you're going to fake a meeting, or are you actually going to get some business done during the meeting? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we can get business done during a meeting because it, it's not in chambers. It not feels silly. It, as somebody who, if you're watching it, it feels silly to watch you guys acting out. Well, I don't think we'll be acting it out. We'll but what I mean so is, if you're doing a mock meeting, everybody's sitting there on the quad. To me, it's, it feels a little silly unless you're actually getting something. I suppose, excuse my, excuse my speaking out of turn, um, I suppose you could do something like put a discussion item on, but really yeah. the whole point is just to see how we operate, that we're legit, we're here to stay, and if you'd like to join, it's more of a, I think it's going to be more of a push for the um, open pilot period. The floor is still yours, Mr. Uh, honestly, it's not like we're going to have scripts in front of us and we're going to be, you know, be pretending to be talk about pretending to talk about things, but we're just going to have five or six discussion items talking about uh, issues on campus and things that we're already working on, uh, just to toss around discussion and for students to really see, to see no, the No, as long as you're actually discussing something, yeah, yeah. then I'm fine. I just okay. wanted to make sure you weren't like reading a script or doing something. No, okay, great. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be discussing, you know, hot topics on campus okay. and, and things that are current, uh, not not just wasting our time. Okay. Does that start your question? It does. All right, so move on to Representative Easy Act with a question. Um, not really a question, but a comment. Um, during the summer, I helped uh, Secretary Burke set her up the phone. It's not an iPhone, um, but one thing that's handy is knowing your server ID and stuff like that. Um, and I know Google server is ID is in our uh, 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 domain and servers. And if, if I'm not mistaken, your, your server ID slash domain ID is your freak username. It's actually slightly different from the email for a, a mobile device. Aaron, Am I? Yes, go ahead, uh, Representative Buckley. Go ahead, Representative Buckley. Um, I'm actually a, a network support specialist at my company. I manage mobile devices, specifically iPhones and Windows phones. And I also, while I was a student here, I worked at the Rick Help Desk. So I'm familiar with some of the issues that the college is experiencing or has experienced with iPhones and with uh, uh, our email system under Microsoft Exchange, Office 365. So I can work with you on that. I'm right, pretty sure I, we I can solve that. that. Um, guys, do you have a question? Uh, is, there, is there any like existing like kind of like Q&A or um, like a section that, that students can refer to? Like, like, <laughs> like that, that other students have had the same issue? Like, really Marissa questions. wrote it, a freshman. Marissa Weiss wrote it. Yeah, but that was I just I, I just remember about. being at uh, it was you know, terribly unsuccessful. I, I, I remember my phone quite well Thursday. Because yeah. yeah. I, I, I was yeah. I, I was at most of those orientations, and I just remember no one from the crowd could get it set up. And I, I was I was standing at Morris Man today, and I actually saw somebody with that sheet of paper, um, and there was like a group of students that were just really confused on how to actually set it up. So uh, if I might be being the floor, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. One second, uh, representing the uh, speaker, Cheeto has something to say. Yep. But I know when I first put it on my phone, uh, a main problem for new students is that you need to change your password on the computer. I see. Okay. Before you can even set it up on your phone. Okay. Yeah. Um, our email system does something magical where you need to actually go to a computer, sign in with your, your RIC ID, but as a Microsoft account, which is sort of activates the server or you're entering the server that your phone the iphone is looking for so long story short it's a slightly involved process due to some settings that are there that don't need to be there and whatever faq might be available right now might not be addressing those specific uh, contingencies okay so i could bring my my expertise managing this stuff to okay. you after parliament all right that'd be great so working with Aaron, i'd like to kind of 
creating something that goes beyond the existing health documents and helps students with current issues that they're having. I believe Representative Tolich is up to set. No, we're all set. Okay, then uh, Lumber Representative Bus, I think. Do you have something else to add? Or oh, those are the comments. Okay. Uh, Representative ATM? Yeah. Oh, no, nothing. Okay, is there any other comments or questions for Vice President Bancourt's announcements? No? Okay, we move on to Secretary Kate Hi guys. I don't have too many announcements today except we I held my first soft meeting this afternoon. Um, it was the first meeting I ever held. So I think it went okay, it ran rather smooth. Rachel's nodding her head, so I don't, I hope that's a true testament. Um, we, it was pretty quick, but we accomplished some stuff. We discussed the holiday party. You guys will see new policy, old, old policy, revised policy on the agenda next week, and model constitution. There will also be some new constitutions coming in. We're already getting stuff into that. Um, and I regret to inform everyone that my SOC, my student work coordinator that was appointed last week, will be resigning. So if you know anyone or any of you are interested, I will be holding um, we'll be holding interviews for that position within, uh, after two, and we're doing it for a week. For, in, in, within the next week, week and a half. So, spread the word, come talk to me, come sign up in the office, Joe will have a sheet out as of tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that concludes my announcements. All right, thank you, Secretary Burke. Now we move on to Treasurer Tadley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today I also held my first Finance Commission meeting uh, <coughs> here at 12.30. I thought it was an incredibly strong meeting, especially for being our first. Uh, we set some very important precedents today at our meeting. And uh, it seems like we're a commission that's gonna stick by the policy this year, which is a very good thing, because last year I think we strayed from it uh, a little too much. Uh, the policy's there for a reason to keep the guidelines set. And uh, just give a shout out to Philip Roeder, one of my newer commission members today, asked a lot of questions. Crafty Matt, Ashley Goldberg, did her thing as usual today. Uh, <laughs> If anybody wants to learn more about funding policies, next Wednesday at 12.30 in uh, SU 4, uh, 307 right here, I'm holding my um, annual president treasurer meeting with the president and treasurers of most major organizations. So if you want to just come and learn more about funding policies, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, what they're passing around now is my general fund report that I created. I'll get to that later when I come up with reports and I can get to my analysis. All right, thank you, Treasurer Dean. And now it's uh, time for my announcements. I will first just be reading off the one <coughs> official leave I have for this evening. It is from Faculty Representative Mark Gunning. Dear Mr. Speaker, due to a conflict in my schedule, I cannot make the SAG meeting. I wish you all a good meeting. Sincerely, Mark Gunning. I am seeking a motion to approve Mr. Lee. Second. Okay. I have a motion from Representative Tunisia and a second from President and with that, is there any discussion on that leave? If not, we move on to a vote. All those in favor of approving faculty representative Gunning's leave, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say no. Abstentions? <coughs> and representative opposed, abstains, and the passes. Uh, I only have one quick thing to say in my announcements. Uh, well, first off, I'm gonna be passing around a sheet, well just one page sheet. It's going to be the other speakers that will be going on this fall semester. So if you just want to please take one and then pass the rest down. Uh, you can take a look at it when you see it, but just some notable names that some of you might be recognizing. Uh, I'm obviously, I'll uh, we'll get into it in a minute, but next week meeting we have a representative from RIPTA coming in to speak, along with uh, Smithfield Town Councilwoman and Rick alum, Susie Alba. Uh, later on this semester we have Rick alum and and, and WPRI anchor uh, Mike Monticava. And October 9th, we'll be having and SCG. an SCG alum. Thank you, President Costa. And we also will be having later on this semester Michael Giacomo, who is the new program coordinator of student activities. We also will be having Mr. Ted Nisi of WPRI and a, and a pretty big local reporter here in Rhode Island. And I'm happy to announce because I actually was able to procure this earlier this week. On the November 6th meeting, we'll be having Rick alum and SCG alum? And S Finance Commission. Finance Commission alum. And May current Mayor of Princeton, Mr. Alan Funk, come in to speak to the members of Parliament about his various experiences at Princeton, some of his advice for you guys. 
So those are things that's coming your way. So if you think you someone you know will appreciate, have them tune in to Anchor TV or come to the meeting, just see that. So and hopefully everyone gets that. And I just want to emphasize again that we are going to be having a representative birthday here this, uh, next week. So if you have any questions for that for individual, I suggest you know making them up. I know alumni representative, thank you. I know alumni representative Buckley will have many of questions, perhaps, for the representative. I know myself this morning, I actually voted 92 for the first time this morning. Uh, took the 9 o'clock bus from KP, Penny Plaza, straight here to Rick. Uh, we got there, we got to Rick on time, 920, but the bus, I would say, was pretty full. It was 90, actually, when we stopped at Mount Plus at the high school right there, right before Rick, I want to say about 90% of the people had actually gotten off the bus. And I know, I believe there was some supervisor of sorts outside watching the trolley to make sure people could get on the bus. I'm, I'm not exactly 100% sure of that, but that did seem to be the case. Um, so if you have any experience you want to share with the group next week, or have any questions, please do so. And if there's no questions or things, I think, okay. So I'm, my friend, I'm, I'm just looking at an album right now from a, uh, a student who's documented her morning commute in on, uh, on Ripta, and then how the first bus that she tried to board left because it was full to capacity of Mount Pleasant students. So this is working out fantastically, and I, uh, I look forward to speaking to the Ripta representative next week. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, next up on the list. What's the name of the group? They did not tell me. They, did, they said it's going to be either a woman named Amy or her boss. They didn't give me more information. The name that I gave you. Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Dr. Penko is very helpful with that. <laughs> but uh, uh, Secretary Burke actually had something to say. I just want to add for the RIP community if you are thinking about coming to the meeting, um, email the RIP SEG office at RIPSEG. At RIP. At RIP. Spread the word. Um, because if there are enough people here for open forum, we would have to hold open forum somewhere other than the room. Yes. Which so please email know? the office and just let us know that you will be there, that you have something to say. We urge you to come. Make your voice heard. Is that all set? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anyone other questions or? All right. With that, my announcements are concluded. We move on to deputy speaker. Oh, yeah. uh, my only announcement this week is again that I'm still looking to fill my committee of commission services. So please spread the word. If you hear somebody complaining, just send them to the office to me. Uh, any department and non department. So just let me know if you know anyone or if you yourself want to be on it. And that concludes my announcement. All right. Thank you, deputy speaker Cheeto. And with that, we move to item. Seven on the agenda, which is reports, and we have item A, general fund report. Mr. Treasurer Dean, take it away. So, um, there's really not much to report on, but the policy states that I'm supposed to give you a general fund report on the uh, first meeting every month. And so, I figured this September's uh, report would be a really good chance for you guys to familiarize yourself with the department and be giving you the first week of every month. So, um, <coughs> As you can see, I, I did it as a, a typical Word document as opposed to like an accounting balance sheet because I know everybody's like different majors and it's kind of hard to read balance sheets sometimes. So um, on 629, that's when our books, uh, well they officially close on 630. So I started there with the general fund as of then. And then we had $127,057.32 for her. And all that is the money that the clubs on Canvas did not use last year goes back into the general fund. Uh, while I'm happy that I mean there's more money in the general fund, I'm also very unhappy that $127,000 is essentially being held hostage by the clubs last year because they weren't using it. And it could have been utilized for uh, you know a lot of the clubs that came in later in the year that had good good ideas for events that we had to deny because um, the general fund problems that we had last year. So uh, I'd like to see that the clubs request the money in their budget, that they actually see to it, that they use it, and that uh, a lot of the clubs, I want them to stop just arbitrarily throwing numbers out there to actually develop a plan uh, to back up how much money they say they need in their budget, and uh, in working with them on it. And then uh, you can see the outstanding organizational bills paid. The only reason that comes out of the general fund is because uh, we, we pay that after all the budgets revert, so it doesn't come out of the uh, organization specific line items. It uh, comes straight out of the general fund, but the organizations that 
potato bills do have enough money in their uh, budgets to complete. And um, in future reports, you'll see that parentheses to notes that it's an expense and that it's money going out as opposed to going out to the general fund. And um, about a week ago, we had a club disband. So their funds that were in their budget um, reverted back to the general funds. So bring it to uh, 303000 
I have a loud mouth. Don't we have a radio station on campus with microphones? Like, uh, maybe we can partner with Donovan. Yeah, it's, um, it's limited. If you're going, I mean, I would say if you're going to have some sort of uh, formal event in Donovan, you'd be to get approval from the director of the yeah. Donovan Dining Center. But, you know, if somebody just sort of stood up and yelled something out to the crowd, I don't know that anybody <laughs> would be able to do it sort of regularly. We did it for a group Boston last year when we were like hardcore advertising right at the very end. Like, I literally remember getting up on the stage that was already set up and standing behind the podium that just happened to be there and yelling to everyone that was in Donovan. And we, there were no repercussions. I think it was just because we were using the loudspeaker and it wasn't like ongoing. Well, again, it's, it's sort of impromptu versus. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think you got to remember it's the resident students breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, <laughs> I, I understand that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you have an apartment, would you like me running into your breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. While you're eating your breakfast. Uh, I think there's that line that you cross. I get that. At the same point, if it's something brief, I mean, brief, but to the point of getting people, you know, hey, by the way, do you know who we are? If you don't, come up and see me. I'm always open for to answer questions, um, type of thing. The only I, rule is we can't leave flyers on. Yeah, that's fine. I, yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, we have all these student organizations who have members. Partner with them so that during student activity day, maybe we can get them to uh, use our use use our the student organizations to you know, say. All by the way, we also have SEG, which is the people who fund all of us. They're the people who run all of our rules. Basically, look at all of our rules, all of our policies, bylaws of the whole. College and well, also, too, a very simple thing is you're all in different majors and different classes. Like, Phil, political science is currently vacant. You could say in one of your classes, you know, we're looking for someone to fill this seat. Phil, the communications is open. We look for someone to fill that. Nick Rose, oh, wait, in the Right, Metcourt, computer <laughs> science and services, yeah. Oh, oh me too. Computer science. Yeah. Um, Let's do it. So, Nursing, <laughs> even though nursing majors really don't have a life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's something as simple as that. Yeah. that, was a little, like, that was a little I think the hardest part is the at large always fills up and the commuter always fills up, and generally the residence halls kind of fill up. But the major ones really don't because, like, I need 17 names and I'm here. Like, it's simple. I go into an anthropos meeting, I get them to sign it, and I'm, I'm here. So I think that if we kind of push the major specific ones, it might be a little easier for people. Because they have, like if you're a major, you have classes and you talk to the people in your major. It's a little bit less intimidating to go to your buddies who you're in your major with and say, hey, I need you guys to sign this thing. Versus like just walking around the quad or walking around your residence hall or whatever. Or like if any of you know anyone who majors in Spanish or a language, well, it's a limited signature. Yeah. So here you go, though. I mean, wow. there are a number of different academic student organizations, right, clubs, with some of these majors. Like, why don't somebody just do some outreach to them? Is there anyone here? I just found out that the Spanish club this week, uh, I just found out this week that the Spanish club meets on Tuesdays at 1230. So, I mean, if Ryan's available at that time or any, any of you guys are available to go and preach. <coughs> here, here's the problem, Madam President. Here's the problem. This parliament, we only uh, have a maximum of 50 seats. There's no way that we're going to be able to fill every single seat. Like, oh, 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 that's not that that I do not get. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a challenge. So maybe challenge. Yes, yeah, 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 it's only 50 seats that. according to the policy. I just want to make one further point with that, too. I think the type of, you're, you're recruiting a particular type of student, right? Yeah. A student who is interested in getting involved in this Kind of stuff, want some responsibility, maybe kind of getting in on the ground level, is available on Wednesday evenings and wants to participate and sort of, you know, kind of a, approaching a large group and just sort of asking them that they want to be involved. I think there's going to be, that's a very sort of hit and miss kind of situation. Not necessarily going to be a lot of people in there with, with you know, that's kind of ready to, to join. But student organizations, people that are going to student uh, uh, clubs or, uh, you know, academic clubs, Go into those meetings. I mean, 
those people have already demonstrated an aptitude to get involved. So I think you have, I think you have a lot better chance of finding somebody who can now fit this. They got to be able to make this meeting too, right? That's another thing. So you know, yeah. Yeah. just to just get. Well, I, mean, yeah. 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 I think one thing that's going to help is, I mean, yes, we can get all the people from the majors. However, if they're all seniors and they're gone next year, what does that help? How does that help next year? We have to get, you know. Obviously, talk to people in the higher level classes, but also talk to the freshmen. And maybe they can come into one of the higher level classes. We can say, hey, this is a freshman, they want to get you involved on campus. Would you be, I mean, you can't obviously have, take their position, bring it. But if you can bring them to your class, uh, ask the teacher for like two minutes at the beginning yeah. for them to just speak. It'd be a good thing. You just hit on the one resource that I haven't heard in this whole discussion. Why I hear the students. I hear friends, I hear student academic organizations, but if you're talking about people who are in majors, then why are we not bringing the professors into the conversation? Does nobody because have well, professors relations? Aren't because, well, in my analysis, my professors are not in my, in my, in well, my, well, hold on. Their opinion is their own, but okay. they know where their students are in the process of attaining their, their major well, classes and their track. Well, as I mentioned in my announcements, I'm working on repairing the relationship between faculty and um, student government. Mm -hmm. Like I said, with not having me with department chairs, obviously my person with the anthropology department chair, um, Dr. Baker, the anthropology chair is Phil. So I do not need to request that, she, that if she knows a student leader in her department to recommend one. But I think that's, that's going to be the key here in these in the chats with the department chairs. Okay. So hey, I'm hey, carry this on right here. The fifty seats, okay? <laughs> and plus, anthropology ha has two seats uh, on it. Even though they have like, say, there's like only one seat filled for anthropology, but they can have a second anthropology representative. That's, uh, to fill Harley, I might like clarify that it should be the intention of this body to fill every available seat so that you have the most diverse array of voices here for debates. So that 50 seats, I would focus on that. Instead of it being a detriment, I would focus on that being a goal to fill. There should be 50 students here. So, we're going to Go ahead. What you're suggesting is that it's we extend that we extend the apartment seats by like twenty by like twenty seats. Well, no, it's no, we're saying we need to fill all the seats. It's not a problem if we have too many, or we we need to fill the seats. It's just trying to figure out how to make it Exactly. Because if I can go to one class and I got 27 majors in that one class because it's an upper level anthropology course. And I'm Trump, Union Representative Allen, just letting you ever know from here on in, the rules are once again being stated. So if you wish to speak, please raise your card and raise it high. Keep them up, please. So definitely, if you can get them. Great. So I went, sorry. Uh, floor still yes. yeah, So I went to the secretary. I said, all right, just give me the classes that have the most majors in it. I went to one class, got every signature I needed with the couple I got from my anthropology meeting, and I was done. And there's a lot of classes that have majority majors, especially you can get senior signatures. You can be a freshman and get all senior signatures if you go into a 400 or a 300 level class or a class that's required to graduate for your department. Get every signature you need to get, and then you're done. Yes, it's scary. Yes, you have to get up in front of people, and yes, the teacher might be looking at you like you're an idiot because they got to get to their PowerPoint presentation that they spent five minutes preparing. But it makes it a lot easier if you go into one class or two classes that have mostly major, and especially declared majors because those are the only ones that actually count. Okay, I'm done. All right, thank you, Dr. Adam. Before I move on to uh, the music, I just want to say, just want to keep it so we just have some new points and also just make sure we're on keeping our discussion and messaging recruitment. That way we can have a discussion. 
that and move on to the rest of the Oh, speaking of a new point, um, one thing, uh, well, we want to obviously get, we want to get these new people from everywhere also. So, I mean, student activities day is obviously the easiest thing to do because everybody's going to be out there. Another thing you could do is look at the events that are happening on campus that each um, organization is putting down. If uh, junior class is putting on open mic night, go down there and just, I mean, not while someone's singing, obviously, but down there while people are singing there, before anything happens, go to, go to events and try to get the following just at events. Because people are obviously, may have the free time to go out and see these events. Maybe they have the free time on the Wednesday night to come here and to meet with us. And that's all I have to say. All right, thank you, Mr. Music. We're now move to Treasurer D. Uh, I know I'll probably be a kill for this, and everybody's going to hate it. But what I think would really help recruitment is getting rid of the petition. I know, I understand, I fully understand the thought behind it, that you want to have your student body backing you with their signature. But to be completely honest, like how many of the kids that signed your petitions actually knew what the hell they were signing for? They were just trying to get you out of their face to get you on and like get themselves on their way. I think if you want to fill 50 seats where we have to reduce that or find a new method, uh, how about get a recommendation for from a professor in your field to represent the student body? Point of information, Mr. Speaker? Yes. incredibly low voter turnout to elections. Representative Burr, I mean, Secretary Burke and I last year, how many times do we count ballots? Enough. And out of the 9,000 or 10,000 students that are on this campus, did we count 10,000 ballots? No, I mean, I want to see what the more votes. <laughs> so, yeah. That so, that. the thing is, the incredibly low amount of voter turnout is just seemed like it was and especially if you have, if you do have elections, every time you maybe want to get a seat filled, you have to hold an election again. Right? Because like if you have an election the first time and those all those seats don't get filled, does that mean you can't? Those seats can't be filled until you have an election. Yeah, I'm sure. uh, I didn't say that we should have elections. Then. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought that's what you were suggesting. No, I was not suggesting. Uh, I'd like to the floor back and uh, just say that last year as a freshman, I remember I took out a petition. Uh, to get us to the government. I did it for like, I tried in my uh, finance, which is like nearly impossible here. And so I tried and I was gonna give up. I was gonna say, you know what, I'm not gonna join SCG, I'm gonna go join XIA or something like that. And the reason why I got on SCG was because if I ran for my class representative, and I was just an election, it seemed easier for me to get on. Like, that's just being honest. I was gonna give up on the petition because I hated it so much. I felt like I was harassing people going up to them trying to get all their things and nobody on campus knows their student ID so they have to pull it out and then they say, oh, I can't do this, I'm really late for class. I think it's just like, it hinders students trying to join because there are a lot of students that would join. They don't want to deal with the petition. And so I think we could do maybe recommendations from professors, um, things like leader seats, maybe recommendations from any administrators or staff on campus. Last year, I, I didn't know anybody in my freshman class because all my friends were in the sophomore class. So I stood outside down and handed out 20 bucks. That's how I got. That's how I got people to vote for me. I still lost my one vote, but I still got like 20 people to elect me. And I think it's it's on our it's on us to be proactive and to be out there and let them know that we're not some like big brother organization on campus because that's kind of like the vibe people get from students that we're like, kind of like the principals to all these organizations. And a lot of people don't want to be put in that spot because they don't want that pressure, they don't want that responsibility. Just let them know that we can accomplish good here also, that we can bring things that people love to this campus, and we can we can really improve student life if, if we had all these seats filled, with all these ideas going everywhere. So that's here, all right. Here, here, all right. Thank you, Treasury. Before I have Deputy Speaker Cheeto to speak next on the list, I just want to point out that a lot of great ideas to run around so far, but we currently have three, four, five, six, seven, eight people on discussion list. We're glad to see a lot of people. Yes, we might just the last thing on the agenda. 
Right. Technically, uh, but I'll get to that. I'm gonna, yes, it is. I'm going to get to that in a second, though. But I just want to say, just want to keep it germane because we don't want to get too off topic because then we get into subtopics and subtopics and then we just don't remember what we're exactly we're discussing in the first place. But with that all being said, I'm going to bring this to Deputy Speaker Chief. Um, I just wanted to say, kind of off the point that um, Representative Pizzi was making about maybe going to events um, and just showing a friendly face. I know both uh, Hillary and Brian had gone to the RSA meeting, and if anyone doesn't know what it is, Resident Student Association, which I am also in, the fact that they they were asked if they wanted to move their item up further onto the list so that they could get out of the meeting quickly, and they responded and said that they actually <coughs> didn't mind sitting there and they wanted to watch the meeting just to see how it worked, and that got a lot of positive we're seen as people who are just kind of like all by the rules and we're not necessarily friendly faces. We're the faces that are in charge of these organizations' budgets or on top of them to get different papers in. Like, we, if we have more of a friendly face, you get more positive feedback and more people are going to stand behind you and talk about you and say SUG is a good place rather than where the people are all the rules. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Chief of those remarks, we have to move on to Representative. Alan. Sorry guys, I wasn't really done. Um, actually, I had a question for you, Alyssa. How many people, or Deputy Speaker Chita, how many people would you say go to the RSA meetings? That was one of my questions. Um, I want to say we have like 45 people at right. our last meeting. These are the people that probably our policies affect the most, and because they live here and they have to deal with it. My other idea was, I understand the reason we have petitions. I don't necessarily like the petitions, but I understand. Is there a way for us to think about having it, all 50 seats that are on the parliament just be open seats? You gotta get 50 signatures from anybody. Because I understand that if we have to do a petition or if we have to do some way to get on that's not teacher appointment or professor appointment, to have it be just 50 open commuters, or not commuter, but 50 seats. Well, who are you directing it? I'm directing it and anybody who knows the answer to the question. Okay. Um, well, I think it's ironic that you mentioned that because after a certain period with petitions, as you know, the open filing period, where you can only file on something that applies to you. There's, it's anybody's game. So, Nick Rose, for example, who's a geography major, could take out a petition in elementary education or technical technological studies and he doesn't have to be in that major so it's almost like but it, it's almost like it's an open seat almost I'm not saying we're gonna use that I'm not saying that's an equivalent I'm just saying it's funny that you mentioned that because it's almost like that happens already but I don't think it really does because if I'm I'm an anthropology major if I'm representing physics then I feel like I should represent no, no, no. physics yeah and but if I'm just uh, I'm not saying at, it's efficient. Right. I'm but saying if that. I'm at large, and I, because we're all really at large. I mean, we all represent the student body. If we just had 50 at large seats, we would have 50 people fill up Parliament every single year. I, I would almost guarantee. Point of information, which you're talking yes, about a bylaw change. If, if you made that this year, it wouldn't help you this year. It would it help you next year. I think you're looking at a solution for this year. I'm looking at a solution that's going to be here. But, but that the discussion right now is to, to focus on this year. And I think what you're do, doing is something that might lead to something along the line, but next year. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. I think that the agenda item is on SCG recruitment, broadly, not specifically limited, limited to this year or the long term. Then you will. It is. And Michelle? Broadly. This, uh, thank you. Representative Kalucci has no clock anymore. <laughs> 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 thank you, Staff Representative. All right. It's only been an hour, guys. Thank you, Staff Representative uh, Buffy, for that point. It is a very broad discussion. I just don't, again, we want to get lost in the subtopics. I mean, we, I mean, like I said, there's been a lot of great ideas so far, but I know there's a lot of discussions right now aiming towards getting rid of the petition, which obviously the petition is a big part of recruitment, but we should also think about other ideas for SU recruitment, hopefully. So with that, I return to Representative. I'll uh, end it for now. Okay, thank you, Representative <laughs> Allen. With that, actually, you want to use yeah. alumni representative, Aaron Buffett. You just only almost one speaker. I did. Actually, <laughs> 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 my boss is habit. I've seen way too many of your meetings. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right.
my only comments would be to encourage this parliament to aspire to make it not only its goal to fill all 50 seats, the mechanism is inconsequential, but to aspire to have such positive problems as having too many people applying for seats. And so we have to have things like elections or races or something. How does this parliament facilitate that end goal? Those include my remarks. Thank you, alumni representative Buckley. And with that, we move to Representative ATM. I just, I just want to agree with Treasurer Dean and Representative Allen about the position because it does kind of make sense as far as when you're going up to a student and you're asking them to, you know, to sign a petition, this is what it's for. And half the times I've seen a lot of people that are trying to get an SCG, they don't even say what it's for, they just say sign my petition. So that way we need to broadcast ourselves, we need to co-sign ourselves. And another thing that Representative Chio was saying that um, to be less robotic and more friendly, like a happy face, like a home away from home type of thing. Because the majority of the students here, they don't even know what's going on. So we have to bring that together to have them understand, okay, this is what student government is for, and we're representing the body. So. Does that conclude your remarks? Okay, thank you, Representative ATM. With that, we'll do staff representative. I, I have a question. How many petitions are out right now? Right. Two. Three. Three. Oh, two. Three. One of them came back. Not just. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it, you, it, it sounds like you're relying on student activities data to be an answer or a solution to your problem. And I think you know, we, we compete, this organization competes with the 80 other organizations, and now sororities and fraternities, they're recruiting people, and it's a huge time commitment if you've ever been in a fraternity and sorority. And so you, you compete with them, like, and behind you, you compete with something like programming. They have a lot of nighttime Wednesday night activities that they're constantly in the mall room while we're meeting in here, in which we, you know, some students, where would you rather be? In the air, this formal meeting, or in there having a good time and eating ice cream, because that's what they're doing. The <laughs> program, programming has 60 members showing up next Wednesday, and the meeting engage 100 because they can't meet in the classroom anymore because it's getting too big. So that's your competition, and that will, that's what will be your competition on the 25th also. So you've got to come out and figure out how you join, who got you to join, and use that to get others to join. If a friend went up to you and said, I'm on student government, you should come to a meeting and see what it's like, that's what you have to do. So put your money where your mouth is, and maybe every person has to bring in one person or your coffee gets like that. And you then become a salesperson. If you really believe in what you believe in, put your money where your mouth is, and go out there and bring, everybody brings one person, we have 28 people next meeting, you know, or the meeting after. And, that, and that's what we'll do, to sit here and come up with a whole bunch of, you know, ideas, and who will do what, will you really do it? But if you forfeit your statement, I bet you you'll do it. And that's my idea. That concludes your remarks. That's it. Thank you, staff representative. <laughs> Maybe we can those interesting remarks. And with that, we move to Representative Goldberg. Um, I just wanted to bring up a point. Last semester, the, um, Kevin Martin had the, actually had the idea of doing a Meet the Candidates Night, which I thought was a great idea. It was kind of put together last minute last year, so it didn't get as big as we'd hoped. But I think maybe this year, if we kind of work together on it, when the senior class, sophomore class, and junior class all put together, you know, their, declare who's going to run for what, if we did a Meet the Candidates Night, you know, we do something where people can come and listen and a debate for to listen for SCG. But if we did that for class clubs as well, that might help bring people and get them interested. Um, I know the people who went to it said they met a lot of people. Um, they got to talk to a lot of people. Um, and I think if we put more organization to it and don't do it so last minute this year, I think it could potentially bring in more people for us. That includes your remarks. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Representative Goldberg. We have the representative of the Allen. I actually have no comment. Okay, with that, we move to Representative Canadian. Uh, striking off of uh, Representative Goldberg's uh, remarks, um, what if instead of you know meet, meet the candidates, meet meet Parliament, meet NSCG, meet the constituents? Because yeah, we are, we're up here. How many people besides when you went out for your position? Did you even explain what you were gonna do to them or do for them to get your constituency? I know every single person I signed for, I had a spiel. Even if they cut me off. I still started with my spiel. <laughs> and I, I would rather someone cut me off 
and them saying, well, why are you handing me this paper? <laughs> I, so I think that's one thing we need to do and work towards, you know, obviously on night when programming's not having an event next door or we don't have a meeting or you know, there's not a big event going up on campus. I'm trying to do it when there's hardly any events going up on campus. Uh, even if we do more than one of them, go to the uh, RSA meeting, as many of us as we can, and sit in there and just be like, hi, we just want to show up, introduce ourselves, because no, we don't represent you for the most part. Like, I'm here at large, so I don't represent them at all. However, there's stuff I'm going to be doing on campus that is going to impact you, so I want you to be able to come up and talk to me. That will end my remarks. All right, thank you, Representative Bizak, and we move to Vice President Ryan Am I the last on the list? Yes, you are, sir. Thank you. I want to be the last on the list to kind of wrap up discussion and just Thank you for all uh, participating in this discussion. I think we came up with a lot of good ideas, and I agree that if we're more proactive in our approach to uh, you know, get people on SCG and our, our committees and just put out a positive image of us, I think we can easily succeed our goal of filling all 50 seats and have that done by the end of the year. That's definitely one of my goals, and I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is, <laughs> and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's all gonna try to, try to do that. Um, is that a push -in? This is that emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Well, to be fine. Yeah. Really. I'll give up my statement if you give up yours. <laughs> oh. 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 I just want to put out there that SCG uh, is not in the interest of holding any statements. <laughs> 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 I thought that was a great idea because not only can we get our faces out there and try to get people to recruit, but we can also uh, hear a lot of ideas and a lot of issues that are happening on campus that we can uh, gain recognition of. Um, shout outs in class, we can always do that. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to go over everything, but I think we came up with a lot of good ideas and I'm very confident that we can fill up all the seats uh, by, the end of, by the end of the year. So I thank you all. Thank you, Vice President Ryan Banco. I just want to say, Thank you everyone for the discussion. Hopefully in the future we can have similar discussions and be continue to be productive, hopefully. And with that, we move to item number <coughs> nine on the agenda tonight, which is updates and remarks. First off, the administration update, Dr. Garrett. Mr. Speaker, I have no updates or remarks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Penfield. And with that, we have no faculty update this evening, so we move to staff update. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I missed last week's meeting, I apologize. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Mark Pillage. I'm a staff representative of the professional staff on campus, and that's, um, I represent the hall directors, the managers of the dining center, the uh, accountants that work in the county, the programmers that work in the program user support services, the professional staff on campus. There's roughly 157 of us. Um, we are not the administration, as we know. Uh, we are those like middle managers. Uh, and that's what I represent. I just happen to be an assistant director for the student union. I'm also Dr. Keene's liaison to the concert committee. Um, I am involved in programming on there. It, uh, I help administer programming on campus, so I'm involved in a lot of student activities, and that's my role. But my role here is to represent 157 or so staff on campus. Um, I will come up with some crazy ideas. I will try to challenge you. I will talk um, the way I want to talk. And, and you may not like it sometimes, and that's okay. I had a lot of history at the college. I was a student here. My first opportunity was somebody came to me and said, hey, my buddy uh, needs some help in the student union. You want a job? And I was a freshman. And I was like, yeah, sure. And that's how I started working in the student union. And that's how I got involved. It was just somebody that just, there was an opportunity, and I took advantage of it, and I loved it. And that's, nobody grows up and says, ooh, when I grow up, I want to work for college. You know, it just happens <laughs> that you just, you just fall into it a little bit because of a friend or, or something like that. Uh, I'm also an alum of the college, and uh, I used to be on the alumni board, and I hope I'll hold the coming. And I look forward to uh, a great and very successful second uh, annual group Boston event. And the reason why I talk about that is, and the success of it is because of a group of students last year that got on social media and sold 900 tickets in less than three weeks. And that's your challenge right now. You're putting up a lot of student money for a great event. We know it's great because we all participated, or a bunch of us participated last year. And, it, and we want to extend it and uh, from the 1,000 or so that we capped it last year to 2,000. And we're in the 
small, like 100 tickets sold right now, so we have to get the word out. Uh, we don't want to sell tickets to just off-campus people because we know there's other issues with that. We provide first a safe concert for our students, and we provide an entertaining evening, and, a, and then we provide a successful uh, event and also a ticket sale. But first, it's a safe, safety issue for us. So we know if our students are involved, if our students buy tickets, and their guests, it's, we have a, safe, a safer evening or the, the, uh, we, we try to do our best to provide the safest possible event. We don't want to open it up to just a whole bunch of people outside of the college community. And so when students say, oh, we're not selling tickets, we should sell them to off-campus people, I usually step up and say, why would we spend your student activities money on somebody that's off-campus that we don't even know that's going to come in and ruin our event? You guys pay for the rec center, you pay a rec center fee, and that's part of the event. You know, we get to use that facility, and we want it to keep it for you know, other generations to come. So with that in mind, um, I strongly suggest that you 15 or so that put up the money for Blue Boston get out there and, and advertise this event uh, to our students. It is a great event. We did it for the first time. When I first saw it, I said, this is going to be a great thing. And we all participated last year and said we want to bring it back and make it even bigger. So that's what we're trying to do. So next year we can make it even bigger again. So um, that's my, my spiel. That's my <laughs> commercial. I will say, as I said to Jordan Day, I will say Group Boston every Wednesday night in Group 307. And hopefully the students that are listening and uh, to Anchor TV are hearing that and come to the Welcome Information Center and buy a ticket for five bucks. That's our, that's our info commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank yep. you, thank you, staff, for the Makelucci. And with that, we need a student's update. That's done. Hey. It's a way to get email on my smartphone. <laughs> 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 initiatives, hopefully people know about the shuttle bus, of course, on campus and all the stops. You can go to the website, search for shuttles, see where all the stops are. It runs uh, every 30 minutes, starting at 7.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. We talked a little bit about that, I think, last week as well. Is everybody familiar that we have zip car on campus? We have, I think, one car. It's over by the Transportation Center in front of Roberts Hall. In order to participate in it, you have to sign up. Um, with Zipcar, get a membership, and then they'll actually, because you're a Rhode Island College student, you get some free credit to use the car for no expense for a little while, and then you have to start paying, but it's, you, know, you can do it by the hour, by the day, and that sort of thing. And all you need is a license. Once you pay the money to Zipcar, and it's like, what, $8 an hour or something like that, it's for the use of the car, it's for gas, it's for insurance, so you don't need your own insurance. All of that stuff is included in sort of that cost uh, per hour. But part of the reason I bring this up is because I got an email from another company called Uber. Does anybody know what Uber is or Uber is? And then this is some sort of car sharing, ride sharing program as well. You know what it is, Nick? Did you no, I don't. I don't even know what it is. Okay. So <laughs> I, I didn't know that. if it was something people were already using. It sounds like you basically you sign up, you get a, an app on your phone. Well, you get an app on your phone. I don't get an app on my phone. <laughs> 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 but um, in, in, so if you need a ride, say you need a ride from campus to downtown, you would sort of in, on the app you'd request a ride, and somebody who else is participating in this network would sort of see that request and they would swing by and pick you up. You would get a note, they would accept your ride request, they would swing by, pick you up, take you downtown because that's probably where they're going uh, as well. And you could also, you know, be one of the people in the network that gives rides if you have your own. So I didn't know if that was something that might be of interest to people, or you know, are we just sort of helping out a, a private industry, you know, and, and helping them make money? All right, I think you think? Yeah, I, I mean, that would sound great in a perfect world. It's just I am a little bit hesitant about that um, because, you know, Joe from, Joe that lives behind Stop and Shop can come and pick you up and bring you to a, uh, it's Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy Plaza. So it's a little bit hesitant. Maybe it's something like I mean, if it's we can look into it as like we can limit the community slightly. 
maybe with a trial run. Yeah, I don't maybe. know much about it. Yeah, yeah. But, but Mark will just put behind a stack of chuck. And then running up to Western Mass, it was, it was a great misadventure. But I actually really, really recommend the Zipcar um, program that Rick is a part of because it, it's very, very convenient. And there are at least, I think Providence has something like 12 different locations just in the city where you can go and pick up a car. If you're in <coughs> Providence at all, you can, you can get a vehicle. So it's actually very cool. I, I also endorse Zipcar. Uh, I actually have an announcement query specifically as alumni representative. I, I've had basically four messages through uh, email and Facebook from students who have graduated acknowledging that they were uh, alumni of the college and wondering if there was any, if there were any plans or, uh, or receptability to the idea of discounted or heavily discounted membership to the recreation center for alumni. I remember looking up somewhere on this, and then it shut off. Somewhere on this, uh, a membership is expensive. Huh? Membership to the rec center is expensive. It's hilarious. It's yeah. something like six hundred dollars for a year. That's okay. Uh huh. I wonder if you know that's something that's for the greater community, for the general community, come to come. Maybe they're just in North Providence, something to use our facilities. Is there any? Possibly for discussion of something for alumni, even if it were a recent one, two year alumni. I think I might actually direct this at uh, uh, you, Dr. Tenfield, or Dr. Kane. Well, I guess as you raise the question, I'm wondering, I think we have a, a rate. Oh, I just didn't see it on the site. I thought it was just for senior citizens. I'm checking. But I think there's a rate for the homes that doesn't matter. It has to do with. With a loan that makes a donation of the Alumni Association or something like that, so then they're eligible for a rate. Let's bring that up. I have it up actually. It's um. Donate a dollar. No, it's not enough. College donors. If you. Yes. Does that happen? We'll give you a free donation. Donate a dollar. Um, I mean, they, 
did go through at least four years, not at least, possibly from two to four years at our college. So I think if we could talk to, I believe that, would that be an issue for John Tancher? Oh, yeah, you, um, you could raise a question yeah. in the administration, <laughs> yeah. and then it would yeah. go through with discussion with uh, Mr. Tencher yes. and others. The way I look at it is, say we get X amount of people, um, X amount of people with this rate. However, we can double X amount of people by just slightly lowering that rate. And double times that rate is still more than X times that rate. Of oh, um, mathematics, of course, by the way. Uh -huh. So, we follow None of us are math majors. So, basically, you can, you can basically more than, you can get more revenue out of it by lowering the price. You can get more people, and that's what I'm trying to say. And we get the same kinds of uh, questions raised from the community, but in terms of setting the rates when we set them, the first priority is to try to maximize the usage of the recreation center by our students. Mm -hmm. and, and then our faculty and staff and alums and so on. But we, uh, we've taken the position that we don't want to uh, bring in so many non-students that we then get kickback from students saying we can't use the facility when we want the facility. So, you know, in a sense, maybe we've erred in our discussions of, of uh, discouraging you know, groups other than students from being there. Maybe we we'll yes. maybe we 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 can come back and look at that based upon yeah. what the utilization numbers are. Maybe a time limit will also be a way to slightly alleviate that. Like um, well, we do that, for instance, with senior citizens. Yeah. They, you, you'd say, well, senior citizens are getting a really good rate, maybe two hundred dollars. Yeah annual rate, but they, they can only use the facility from opening until noon. Okay, okay, yeah, something like that, I mean, would probably be perfect. I mean, most alumni probably work late anyway. So if you can get like a late uh, night owl, possibly. I mean, certainly, I guess, I guess I, I'm admiring the discussion because here you are as students who have, from the point of view of the administration, we want you to have top priority, and you're speaking up for alums. So certainly that's, uh, you know, uh, that's something that's not next. I believe that's all the case next This group should be arguing that they jack the rates up on the faculty staff. <laughs> 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 so then it doesn't cost students as much, right? I mean, if you are representing students, that's what you should be doing. And I appreciate your position. Because I'm paying that same rate, too, isn't it?
but that's just a thought. Back to you. Uh, point of order, uh, uh, point of information, Mr. Speaker. Yes, um, Please. A one-by representative update is for the representative Buckley uh, yes. to update uh, the department on uh, what's going on. We, it, it just can't turn into a lengthy debate. You can't turn into a lengthy debate. Point so. of information, Mr. Rose. Um, this was a concern brought up by Representative Buckley from one of the alumni staff, and seeing as he is an alumni representative, he's totally in his right to create this, and we were just answering that with our own thoughts. Thank you. Words out of my mouth there, Representative Music. I think the key thing is Representative Buckley was speaking to us as a body, and I think he's more than happy to answer any questions or concerns that uh, anyone happened to have. Is that correct, Representative? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, Representative Cox is done, but thank you for your remarks, Representative Rose. And with that, we turn to Representative Stubbs. I love that Representative. I uh, know. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> with that, we move on to appointments, resignations, and vacancies. President Costa. Thank you. Before I announce those, all of you who filled out the questionnaire as a, as a representative, please get those in to me. Also, the, if you're going to clean up sign up sheet for the team, please hand it over to me when that's completed at the end of the meeting. Okay, um, we have the resignation as we announced earlier, James Grayson from his position of Student Organizations Coordinator. God bless you. Um, for the Bylaws Adjudication Commission, I officially appoint to the last non-student parliament seat, Laura Howard. To the Elections Commission, to, to four student parliament seats, I appoint Magalie Etienne, Bill Matolich, Rachel Mial, and Bill Myra Delumba. For the Finance Commission, I was an interim appointment for today's meeting, but officially appointing Philip Roeder. To the Public Relations Committee, I'm appointing John Kamisiak to the first student parliament seat, and to the second student, second non-student parliament seat, Samantha Manville. And to the Student Entertainment Committee, I appoint Belvira DeLomba to the, sec the second student parliament seat, Victor Morenti to the programming seat, Michael Hall to the commuter seat, Mark Pelucci to the du Dean of Students or Designee seat, um, Emma Dunn to the second non-student parliament seat, and Marissa Bernal to the other non-student parliament seat. And finally, and oh, not finally, to the Student Organizations Committee, the Student uh, Activities Representative designee will be Michael Jackalone. And to the Committee of College Lectures, I also appoint Magdalene Etienne. For vacancies, the Conditions and Services Committee is still searching for members. The Academic Affairs Committee has one more student parliament seat open and two non-student parliament seats open. The Elections Commission has three student, three student parliament seats open and three non-student parliament seats. The Finance Commission still has three student parliament seats open. Personnel Evaluation Committee is looking for three student parliaments, one of them being a member for at least a year. The PR Committee is searching for six more student parliament members and three more non-student parliament. The SEC is looking for one more student parliament, an organization representative, and a resident student. The Student Organizations Committee needs three more non-student parliament and two student parliament. Oh. And I'm not appointing Tyler from the Personnel Evaluation Committee because the policy states that a member cannot be from the Executive Council. Does that, does that yes, that, that All right, right. with that, that you ask me to consent? I'm sorry, there was a vacancy. I ask that those be accepted with unanimous consent. Okay, is there any objections to any of those <laughs> appointments? Any objections? No objections? Okay, with that. All those appointments are boom. All right, guys, we now move on to uh, second to last item of the agenda this evening, issues of public members. Now I'm gonna ask that everyone please raise their cards high as we go around the room and make sure. Thank you. I love that Representative Buckley. Lou, have you guys, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker Chief, goes around the room, make sure she gets all of you. Please raise your card high.
Um, there are events and, you know, things like online and stuff like that. Just keep your ears and eyes open and just be aware. Um, the week's all about making people more aware of people who are suffering from depression and anxiety and um, self-harm and all that good stuff that I'm sure is you know, whatever a wonderful move. Um, but yeah, that was about it. Right, thank you, Secretary Burke. But then moves to Representative Kamizia. I have uh, a couple things to say. Uh, one, I'm gonna reiterate myself, like I said last week, and join traffic and parking, because I'm pretty sure that has one more. One more student seat, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, also, I would just like to, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I do want to bring up uh, RIPTA issue again, uh, since we are going to be talking about it next uh, week. RIPTA, this morning I had a friend um, jump on the RIPTA bus, and they actually had to call, not another trolley in, but another bus in to follow it. Um, there was a RIPTA representative outside the bus that came on, and in not these exact words, said, why is it that, um, why is it that there's so many Mount Pleasant students on the bus at nine o'clock today when normally on a Tuesday or a Thursday they'd be on the bus at 7 a.m.? And I actually did find out an answer from that. Um, Samantha Mandeville actually did some research and Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings, uh, Mount Pleasant actually starts school later than they do any other day of the week. They start at 9.30 rather than their normal time of, I believe, eight. Uh, 9 and 9 so traffic for commuters. I want to say this to you guys over there. Four commuters will be, at least until we get this issue situated, will be denser during those time periods on Wednesdays. So if you ride the ripped up, please take that into consideration. With that, I end my uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Representative Mizia. And with that, Representative Goldberg. Um, I decided to take a shuttle to see how it was going this year. I knew last year was going really well, and I wanted to see how it was this year. And I noticed that the bus drivers were not stopping at a lot of the stops. They were kind of, they'd be driving, kind of hit the brake, couldn't see, and no one's there, but they keep going. They didn't really stop, and like, we had one student who was like running after the shuttle at one point, like frantically waving arms, and like, they'd been standing on the steps. So I don't know if maybe that's you know typical, they're not supposed to stop at every stop, or if they are. Were you on the shuttle during the day or during the later afternoon? I took it in the morning and in the afternoon. Mika is the driver in the morning. <laughs> yeah, she she was a whole lot better on it, um, on stopping more. But the, um, one in the afternoon, it was literally like he'd ask a student got on, who was like, where are you going? And he'd just go right to there and not stop anywhere else. I'll make a there. call tomorrow morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Is that up? Yep. All right, move on to Representative Rose. Hey, hey, guess what today is? Oh, 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 day! Is that? Hey, actually, actually, no. Actually, no. Um, yes, hey, as I said last week, that my, that my birthday was coming up, and, and today's actually my birthday. Uh, today, I'm, 20, I'm 26, oh, year, 26 years old. <laughs> And, all, and also, I'm still waiting to hear from Mr. Kelly over at New Hall about the second seat. So, the, I haven't heard from him since I sent the email to him. So, so uh, hopefully, uh, I get a response back from him. That's all I have. Thank you for the episode. And I think that since uh, it is. Oh, sure, No! What? We still have to put the list of representative votes if you don't mind holding off on that adjournment motion. Please. <laughs> Oh, uh, who, uh... We still wait, have you on the list if you don't mind waiting. <laughs> you want to sit in that motion. No, I don't mind. Who, who Thank you, Representative Rose. It's, it's confidential. But I would like to first say, well, I wish happy birthday, Mr. Rose, and I suggest that... I say we make a motion to sing uh, happy birthday. There's nothing to <laughs> <laughs> So how about we say to Mr. Rose, because it's his birthday. Turn it off, Bobby. All right. Happy birthday!
be as fast as the draw at the end of the meeting, okay? <laughs> All right, the, does that include your remarks? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. With that, move to alumni representative. I'll be really quick. Okay. Um, I actually wrote up a bunch of instructions <laughs> last year for setting up your smartphone that took into consideration. Huh? Yeah, I took into consideration what you need to do with the Microsoft account and such for iPhones and then every other device under the sun. So if anyone here has an iPhone that you cannot get to connect to your Rick email, that is also a student because while yours may work, there is a separate distinction between at rick.edu and an email at rick.edu. And I feel like that's students' issues. So if any of you have an iPhone and can just you know, no, it's, um, I, I, I it's the fact that um, it could be because it's the email.break.edu because I did mine when it was still at break.edu. Uh, what about Galaxy's? Uh, do you have any? Anyone with smartphones come see me after party. <laughs> 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 right, that's 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 your box. Thank you. Thank you for the sign helpfulness. With that, we move to President Costa. Hey Rose, I got you a birthday gift. Oh. I'm letting you make the motion to do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Well, do it, Jarvis. Okay, second yeah. from <laughs> and second from President Costa to adjourn. Is there any discussion on adjournment? With it. no discussion, discussion, we move to a vote. I just want to say real quick. Please be quiet during the German so Mr. Obi I can take proper roll call. I we both appreciate that. Thank you very much. Remember, please stay quiet. With that, all those in favor of the journey, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say no. Extensions? No extensions? We adjourn. Be quiet. Yes, Mr. Obi Yak. Hillary Costa. Here. Ryan Beckford. Group Boston. Caleb Burke. Still here. Tyler B. Here. Robert Santuri. Here. Melissa Chino. Here. Rebecca Allen. Not y'all. Philip Roder. Here. Bill Lyra DeLoma. Hi. Magdalene Etienne. Here. Ashley Goldberg. Hi. Jonathan Kamisia. Woo woo! Rachel Miali. Adios. Nicholas Rose. Here. Bill Katolich. Here. Gary Fenfield. Here. Scott Keane. Here. Amina Sarawagi. Mark Gunning. Mark Bielichi. Mary Buckley. All swell on those Good night, everyone. Next oh week is next week. Yeah. 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 Yeah.